All right, y'all all right? Yes, sir. All right, too to be here. Too to be here. By the con of Mr. Yahuwah, he had granted us another yun. Ain't that right? Could have been gone. Sleeping in a grave. Well, Mr. Yahuwah. Isn't that right? That's who we're looking to, Mr. Yahuwah. For all his benefits. You know, y'all heard that thing lightning and thundering last night? How many of y'all just slept through it? You didn't hear nothing. Man, you can't help but to hear that thing ever. That thing was going wild out there. That's a, isn't that right? I appreciate Mr. Hua for how he operate, how he work, as he see fit. That's what we have to do. We have to learn to accept. That's something we got to learn how to do. I guess that's the biggest thing for us is um, basically um, kind of considering how to accept things that Mr. Yahuwah see fit. Um, we talked about on many occasions with EU, how he learned to accept when he lost his whole family. He lost all his goods and everything he had and realized that only one person give and one person take away. It's good for us that we get that kind of mindset, you know, not, you know, just for if something should happen, we lost our family or lost our welfare or, or goods, but just however he tends to work or he allowed things to happen because there's always another, um, uh, another lesson learned or some, something that comes in to attract or have it seem to work. The main thing is, I guess, for us to get to know him and to know ourselves. I know with all the society woes um, and the different things we all deal with when we suffer, sometimes it's hard for us to kind of phantom in our mind um, what we need to do and how important it is to stay focused on him regardless of other things out him that we kind of encounter and we deal with. But at the end of the day, that's what we got to do if we're going to be saved. Right. Um, we talked about a little last night on how important it is, you know, to recognize the purpose or the need to be saved. You know, and in, in doing that, also recognizing what does it take for us to continue in that pathway. You know, not allowing other things to distract us or get us off uh, regardless. And, you know, in life, things happen. But at the end of the day, we look at the final result of what we're trying to do. The goal is to be saved. And in order for us to be saved, there's a mindset, there's an intellect we all have to possess. And that's why we come in constantly going over things, trying to consider things, looking at things for what they are, and making sure we got an understanding of what it is that he's actually trying to get us to do. I think for years, and we're not thinking, I know for years we've done things and they've been repetitive, but they hadn't been conducive to salvation. So our goal is to make sure we get an understanding and I appreciate the fact, you know, he allows us to be able to look at the three different references from the Greek, from the Latin to the King James perversion. And, um, you know, so you can just kind of look at how many different times you've been dealt something differently than what it actually is. It would be great if we could have the original writings to compare to just to see how much alterations have been done to make sure it don't fit you. Hello, you know how you can go buy something and you don't get it because it don't fit? Sometimes you'll find some stores they'll have, they say, well, we have um, a seamstress here or whomever. Somebody that can take it up or take it in or let it out, you know, sort of fit you. These people have done the same thing. They've taken it and they saw it fit us, and then they made it now where we say, well, that don't fit me. So we kind of just walk away and we just give away. Man has a, another character on the inside of him, his soul. And your soul is crying out. It's in need. It's in dire need of something. You know, people feel like they need a relationship. People feel like they need a house. People feel like they need a car. People feel like all, all, all kind of different things people feel like they need. And a lot of times, that's the outer man. The inner man needs something. He needs comforting. He needs a solace. And a lot of times, we don't do it. We'll work to do a lot of things to kind of, um, kind of you know, to fulfill what the flesh might want, the outer man, but it's the inner man we gotta look at trying to repair. That actually needs to come, because you can get all these things, but if the inner man is without, you're still empty. You still got that void in your life. And a lot of us hadn't ever recognized, sometimes people are strive real hard for jobs, careers, and then when they get them, they realize, ah, this ain't really what I wanted. Because you just looked at it from the outside exterior, what you could do and never the inside. Because a lot of times when you get things, I was talking with somebody about um, moving up and making a change and getting more money, and they kind of recognize themselves. Sometimes you can do that and realize, you know, what it'll call for you to do 
is not what you feel like you can actually give them. And they wind up taking away more from yourself. In order to get natural things sometimes, you can wind up giving away more of yourself that you can actually, it's actually expendable. Because you'll find out how much more time you got to put in, how much more responsibility you got to give to it, how much more care you got to give to it. And when you start to weigh it, the money don't equal out to when you look at the benefit for yourself. It's very few things that we found in life that we get that benefits us. Hello? When jobs hire you certain corporations, some of the way they woo you is by promising you or showing you their benefit packages. But when you get in and realize how much you got to do, the benefit packages don't really weigh when you look at really. It's draining. It's exhausting. It's tiring. It's never ending. It's constant. So you start saying, wow, the benefit is not really here. So it's important for us to learn how to um, fulfill the inward man. Get that inward man to get him, that he gets that relationship with Yahuwah. So then you learn, regardless of how much money might pay to something, it's about my comfort level. Regardless of what the promises is you might want me to do or whatever, it's always about your comfort level. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to give too much of yourself to something that then that inward man is drained out. Then when they come in, you're trying to come in and get a, a spiritual, as they call it, a spiritual reviving, you can't get it. You can't get it. You're giving too much of yourself out. And then you constantly keep giving so much of yourself out, you can't actually renew yourself to actually grow. Y'all got what I'm saying? Are y'all with me? Y'all think I'm talking in Swahili? I mean, I mean, we, we definitely religious people, whether Christians or Buddhists or whatever you might call it, where we at. We're religious people. We just got to really sit down and look at what really, what's really fulfilling to us and what has a real promise to it. You know what I'm saying? We're looking for guarantees. Y'all all right? Guarantees. That's what we're looking for. Sometimes with loans, what they'll do to make sure you'll pay back, they'll make you put up what they call collateral. Hello? So that's more of a guarantee. If you can't pay, I still don't lose. Y'all familiar with that? Any of y'all ever had to put up a, a, a collateral for something? Well, that's what they do. They give you a loan for a car. They can give you that same amount of money don't get the car, but they realize there's no collateral involved. I stand more loss. Y'all got it? If I loan you $50,000 for to, to go and play, what's my collateral? What's my chance of getting it back? Just your word? I need collateral. I give you $50,000 on a car that's worth $70,000. So that way, even if I lose or you don't pay, I can get the car back. I can recoup my money, at least my money, and, profit, and possibly profits. Y'all got what I'm saying? Because I got something on this table. Well, with Yahuwah, what he asked us to do, believe it or not, he put up collateral. He put his name up and his son. He got collateral. So we got some on the end. We can't lose. You can't lose on this deal. A lot of these other religions that you'll go and get in, nobody put nothing up on them. What's the collateral they got behind them? Ask these people with the, with the religion. What's your collateral behind this religion? What do you stand to collect at loss or anything? What do you stand? They don't care. It don't matter. It's just trusting in something. I don't want to just trust in something. I want to, I want to trust and believe in something that's right. Y'all got it? That makes sense to y'all? Good. I don't know. Y'all kind of looking like the weather outside. I don't know what you want to do, where you want to go, or what you really believe. But we, we have to question ourselves, and it's good to question yourself from time to time to see where you're at. Look at what you have to do and look at where you're trying to go. And how far are you from where you're going? I remember going to the country. I had my mind that when I was going so many period of time. And again, when I was a kid, I didn't know we weren't going. I thought we were going out of state. <laughs> you know, they said out of town. I'm thinking we're going out of state. We weren't going nowhere. We was in the same state. But you were going, you had mile markers you start looking for. You start looking at certain, like certain signs. It was certain places I remember seeing. I remember guys, said, okay, we're there. Okay, we got about this much longer time. You know what I'm saying? You start looking at things that put you almost to where you're going. And so you start looking. Sometimes I close my eyes and close my eyes for a while. So I'm open my eyes. I want to try to be open my eyes, hoping I'm at least some of you. I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm not. Or either I am or I pass. I'm glad. If I'm not, whew, at least got to get to this point so I'll see I'm getting closer to where I'm going. Anybody used to do stuff like that? I do it now while I'm driving. So I'm open down But at the end of the day, that's, that's what you look at. So this is what we're looking at. You close your eyes every night. You're going to sleep. When you wake up, are you closer or further? See what I'm saying? That's what you got to look at. Even the book talking about now is our Yeshua, our salvation nearer than when we first believed. 
See, just like I was saying here, to close my eyes, I open my eyes, I hope we at least make a certain point where I want to be at. If you open your eyes, you say, okay, good, we at least him. Now we got to go here and wait a little while, and I'm going to do it again so I can try to eventually get to where I'm going. How many of y'all feel like you're getting closer? We're not, not just, we're talking about just the death. We're talking about in the endeavor, what we're trying to accomplish and salvation. I mean, all of us are closer to death. That's, that's, I mean, that's what that, uh, in a reservation. We're all closer to death. We're talking about getting closer to our salvation, getting closer to this man coming back here to deliver us. Y'all got me? That's the completeness of what we're trying to do. That's Tal mean complete. When he comes back to deliver us from this place like he did in Mizraim, he personally came down and delivered them out. Y'all got it? And that's what we're looking for him to do now. We're looking for somebody to deliver us from so great a death. Hello? We're talking about not just the death of the, uh, the basal, the flesh. We're talking about the death of the nephites where it goes down into a, a lump, an eternal pit of just burning. That's the, that's the deliverance we're looking for him to do for us, aren't we? Or have you even thought about it that way? Hello? Hello? Are you thinking about it now? The so great a death. We're not talking about just that death is one no one can escape. So I wouldn't call that the so great a death. We're looking at the so great a death of after the mosh pot. That death that we take on, that move we take on, you can't recover from that one. That's unrecoverable. You can't be redeemed from that. Any redemption that can be done for any of us, and let's just go with right now, all of us going, she up. Now tell my great, let's go with that scenario, okay? Now our goal in coming here is to avoid that. So now we're looking for him to deliver us from that so great a death, okay? There's no, he won't deliver you from the natural move. That's not going to happen. That's an appointment that's given to everybody, okay? So get down out of your mind. We can do it. We can exercise. We can run. We can take pills and vital vitamin like Lucy them made up some vital vitamin you could take. And the stuff that Florida took and Michael took. You remember the vitamin that Florida put a took on good time and Michael wound up getting in here alcohol in it? Vita Bright. Okay, nobody seen good time. Remember the episode? Yeah, Vita Bright. They said she had an honest face. They wanted her to sell Vita Bright. And Michael got into it and started drinking, found he had alcohol, he got drunk. But don't worry about it. All this stuff they try to do, and they try to use an honest face to try to deceive you. Our goal is not to be deceived, to make sure we get this thing right before we leave him. Y'all got it? Any redemption that any of us can get, we got to try to accomplish it now. Okay? Let's go with where everybody's going. Everybody on the rock. Let's just go with everybody on the rock that's going to show. Okay? Our goal in coming here, you got to look at your worst case scenario. Okay? So you learn how to work yourself out. Don't go with, well, maybe I won't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like, I don't, I don't want to think you need to because you keep lying to yourself. First thing to do is everybody stop lying to themselves, okay? So the goal is to avoid, to evade it. Y'all got it? And the only way to do that is to get into his son, okay? This is the only person that he has deemed to be Sadiq, him and Abraham, basically. So anybody else that's been named Sadiq, you've been following the patterns of. Okay, if he came right now and said, you righteous, candidate, you righteous, based off of what? Based off of who? Pattern. pattern. You're going to look at the pattern. It's got to be stipulated off of a pattern. The writings set the precedent for the pattern. Okay? Abraham, Yahushua, they followed the pattern. Everybody from those two had to mimic. Everybody's been mimicking. Who do we learn how to mimic from? Hands. Good answer. I said, hand. They said, hand. They don't be listening. Who's, who hand was up first? Who uh? Now the white man say he seen Cannon first. They gonna blow the rest of y'all darkers out. What we got, Cannon? I say you're cold. How many agree? He said you're cold. Okay, wrong answer. I just want to say I'm gonna go. When I did, they went up with him. Oh, uh, he got the right. Tell him who. That's right, Ishmael. Ishmael. That's who we learn how to mimic from first. Okay. Well, I mean, you're cold. We could use him too. But the first we learned from was Ishmael. He learned how to mimic. Think about it. This boy who was born after him was the promise. So it made sense for him to show up, as Yahushua said, except you be converted and become ass. You shall know no wise in the end. He looked at, I got, he had a barith, a covenant. But now this child that came along after me has the actual literal barith to Yeshua, which is salvation. 
So it only made sense him being thir approximately about 13 years of age to do what? To be converted and become as. Since he has a promise of a rift that's better than the one that I have. Y'all got it. He proceeded from Abraham, so something was going to be granted to him for that. But we're looking for something that was greater, which means he didn't look at, well, I ain't worried about what his is. I got my own. His is his, my, my. No, I'm trying to mimic this child. Y'all got it. They said marking, but think about it in mind at the same time. If this is the one of the promise, I'm willing to put mine aside. Even the book said laying aside every weight. So think about it. He was willing to put aside to look at mimicking to become like this little child. What you willing to do? Good answer. Good answer. Oh, no. You tell me. That's what we got to do. We got to be willing to convert and become ass. And except we do it, you're in no wise going to end in. So now you look at if, if um, um, Yasakop, he laughs. His, son, his name is that day. That's exactly what his name is. He laughed. That's why Sarah named him Yasakop because he made him laugh. He made, which means she made him happy. That's the same thing Yahushua told us about. Yahuwah was telling about Yahushua. This is my Kabi B or Yeladah, my uh, being, in whom I'm Yasakop. Y'all hear that? See, he satisfied. made him happy. He's Yasakop. And the reason why, not by name, but by characteristic. That's not his literal name, but he made Yahushua, he made, he made Yahuwah laugh. He satisfied him. He was happy with it. Yasakop. See, you're looking at just getting the name, but do you have the proof of the evidence? He made the father happy. So that's our goal. Now, when we come along and we do things that make the Abba happy, and he told her, he said that Abba had never left him alone. Why? Always Yasakop. I make him happy. Y'all hear me? That makes sense. So now, guess who you can be? You can become an heir to the promise. All we have to do is make him happy. Hello? Does that make sense to y'all? You, you keep trying to go somewhere that people before us tried to go, and people that's in our generation to the dog are trying to go, and people before them, and people before them, and people before them. And a lot of these people never accomplished their feet because people didn't sit down and look at it plainly and look at I mean, think about it. They didn't have the information of where they were going. You getting the Greek, the Rome, the Latin, and you getting the James perversion at the same time. You got one or the other. That's a lot of books to keep up with and try to read from all three of them at one time. So you're typically going to have to get rid of some of through technology. He allow us to be able to put all three of them up and examine it side by side. Most people ain't going to carry no Greek, Latin, and no King James book and lay them all down and try to read all three at the same time. You're going to get one and get rid of the other ones. The reason why it's important for us to look at all three because we need to examine these people. All these people done had us captive before. And there's a reason why each one of these people changed their information. Which keeps the slave more disciplined? Think about it. With the Greeks, the Greeks stayed a little more closer to actually possibly what it was. And you can probably look at, they're going to break away. The next people get you realize there are certain things I need to oust. There are certain things that don't even need to be said. Then when James and them guys, they look at first, I don't even need you reading. I need you to sit back and let me just tell you what you need to say. And now the day with a preacher, if you go get a job, you got to try to show what you've been to school. If you look, all them been to school got some of the same vernacular. They got the same character that they'll tell them. They all start quoting Greek. You don't hear them quoting Latin, do they? They'll quote the Greek, the Greek. And so in the Greek, the word in Greek, they keep going and they keep moving them back over to, but they teach them a certain discipline to make sure they don't get away. Same way the slave master did with his, with his so-called nigger slave. He made sure he taught them just enough where the slave didn't escape. I'm sure he would teach him stuff like wait on the Lord and be of good courage. For what? Why would you tell a slave that? That's right. Them slaves always looking to try to escape at nighttime. So you got to teach them how to stay and how to wait. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. The teacher just wait on the Lord to come and deliver them. That's true to you. Who is going to come and he's going to deliver his army, his people. But the way they taught it to you, it taught us to be passive and be accepted to and to appreciate and to love the people that oppressed us. Y'all got it? Yes, the whole thing was to turn us to where 
it made us angry about our situation to look at how did I get in this situation? When we blame the, the slave captive, was it really the slave captive more than it was the behavior of the fathers? It was the behavior of the fathers. But see, we had to learn that. We spent a lot of time hating him. Then we came to love him, and we never learned how to love ourselves nor love our creator. Y'all got everything you love was the slave, the master. You loved the master. You loved his wife. You loved his kids. You loved all the things that the master possessed and all the things the master belonged. Everything that belonged to the master that you protect and give your life for it. And you made sure the master didn't get sick. The master welfare was more important to you than your own welfare. The master kids were more important to you than your own kids were. The master savior was more important than any savior you could think of or even come up out of your mouth with. He gave it to you. Everything you got, your love and your hates came from your oppressor. So now we have to start learning how this has come and been another hurt to us. It's been another distraction, another hole. Now we're coming back and we read through the book. We start looking at who we got to blame. We got to blame the father. He said, that's why I visit. I came to visit the kids. Y'all got it because of the behavior of the fathers. Now we come back and look at who we got to put this on. This has been our fault. This whole situation, this whole long duration, this thing been going on, it's been our fault. Why would he deliver us until we recognize it came in the knowledge of? It made it much sense to bring a Yasharal out and they didn't even know who he was. They had to know who he was. Y'all got it? They had to know it, first of all, that he exists, that he was always existing, and he didn't just exist in the time of captivity. For us, when Yahuwah came alive for us? When? While we've been in captivity. So now we had to go back and learn his existence started before this. Wow. We're just going to believe that salvation just started just now? Salvation existed before this. In order for you to get it, first of all, you had to learn what was your condition. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. When are we going to learn it? It's because of our condition. Y'all got it. We need it right now. We need to get it now. But then we need to learn it was existing before this happened. And it was set up based off of some reasonings to let us know that everything he said was going to happen has happened. We suffer. We go to the doctor. We fill out paperwork. They ask for your history. Your history involved who else on that paper? Your mother and your father? Who else? And your grand. Why don't you just leave your mother and father? They're going back to let you know I'm visiting the Kataim, the sins of the fathers upon the Benin to the third and the fourth Tuladah, and I by no means clear the guilty. That's why we're suffering. That's why our homes are broken up. That's why our kids are going astray. That's why we sit and so that's why we're sick. That's why we keep sitting in this captivity. That's why we sit confused. That's why things seem like they don't work out for us when they should work out for us on a lot of time. Because the fact of, I'm visiting. I'm coming back to repay. I'm coming back to repay him. And now he looked at, he told us, and he told our Abba that he was going to turn the Benim law back to him. Look at us. We're the product of people who didn't acknowledge and who didn't know. But they created that based off of some other people that came before them that didn't know. And when some of them came in knowledge, they didn't get the knowledge of why it was important for them to turn away because there's some people going to suffer behind you. Hello? There's some people going to suffer because of your behaviors. Hello? Wow. Y'all don't want to talk about it. I did some things in my life, and my kids and my grandkids and their kids got to suffer. And you know what that teach them when they learn that? You got to get yourself right. You already got a load on your back already. You know, anything else you're doing, you just keep adding more to it. That's it. We all suffer because of behavior of other. And that should charge us to make us consider why it's important for Tony Smith not to screw up. Because it ain't going to be, well, that's Tony Smith. Someone else can suffer behind that. Why you got to suffer, why you got to turn, because somebody else can suffer behind that. Okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. There ain't nothing y'all need to concern about. Don't worry about it. You just keep doing what you're doing. You should be fine where you're going. Where do we say everybody's starting out from? All of us. Where we starting out from? She on. Where we talking? The grave, she on? No. Let's, let's go with we already in we already in the inferno. What we trying to do? Heat this thing up hotter? Got to get out. We can't cool it off. We can't put it out. The only thing we can do? Get out. Anybody ever had something to catch on fire in the house? How many of y'all had something to catch on fire and you put it out? How many of y'all had something to catch on fire and you couldn't put it out and you had to get out? 
That's how bad we are. We can't put this one out. All the thing we can do is get out. Okay? I know people, y'all ain't used to people tell y'all that. But, oh, I don't want to, that teacher scared me. I hope it's scared, quote unquote, that they say, the hell out of you. I hope it scare the hell out of you, as they would call it. Okay? Is that important? I'm, you don't take it serious. All you're going to do is go through like everybody else done, and you're going to die, and you're going to perish. All of us. If you don't take it serious at some point, you're going to die, and you're going to perish. Death will be the, the best thing that ever happened to you. The worst thing that happened to you is what happens after death when you're in the mosh pot. Why should we wait until we get to the mosh pot to say, oh, man, I should have changed. Oh, man, I should have did right. Oh, man, I should have repented. This is the dumbest thing that could come out of your mouth because it won't matter then. Everything that's going to matter for us has to be right now. Right now. That makes sense? So we work from that vantage point. I think we'll do better. What y'all think? Okay. All right, we'll try to move you out for it. Society don't want you to do it, but it's necessary, right? Because, see, when you start looking at changing, you start looking at doing right, you start looking at being with your creator, you start looking at changing things and cutting things out, what you think of having other people that you associate with? That's going to make a big difference with them. That's going to make a big difference. They're going to start having to consider. They're going to start having to think. Why not? So, well, I'm thinking about my soul. I'm considering my soul before I die. You know, I already got shield. I got the battle. I'm battling infirmities now. I need to try to make sure I get myself out of him. Y'all got it? And that's going to make you have to cut some ties and some relationship. That's going to make you have to get rid of some things. People don't want to talk and be real about what they need to do. Because when they do, that's a lot of responsibility on you. People don't want that responsibility. People want to pass the, they want to pass the book on to something else or act like it's something, act like something just going to miraculously happen. How about for a record? Nothing just miraculously happens. It does not happen. Y'all got it? A fire cannot start except there are some mitigating factors. Y'all got it? There has to be an igniter. There has to be some flammable. A fire just cannot just start off this carpet. It can't happen. It has to be something that ignites. Y'all got it? Lightning can't hit no rock and it start no fire. It's not flammable. It doesn't happen. Something has to be there. Y'all got it? Okay, let's go with this miraculous salvation. How you plan on getting this miraculous salvation out of nowhere? There has to be some mitigating factor. There has to be a situation where salvation is conducive. Y'all, it has to be needed. Hello? It has to be warranted. Why not just be a salvation? You need to ask for it. Oh, no, man, you ain't got to ask for it. I'm just giving it out. It don't make sense. Then if you're asking for it, you got to know how to ask. According to Jacob, they called Jane. He said, you ask amiss, wrong, that you might consume it upon your lust. So that's why he said you have not, because you don't ask. You don't ask. You don't know how to palau. You don't know how to ask. See, all that's important. Can I, give me some. Went not talking to me. Nigga, I snatched that bag. Nope, nope, nope. All this is incorrect. That's the way you got to ask. Y'all got it? Do y'all, let me ask y'all something. Because we don't have to do this. Is this something y'all want to do? Yeah. I want you to be real with yourself. That what I've told you so far, is it allowed you to start to think and consider and stop just thinking some magical TV does that? TVs and cartoons. You know, I've done it. I wanted it. Something magical just happened. <laughs> Nothing magical is going to happen. He doesn't deal in magic, okay? He deals inside of parameters that makes sense. Y'all got it? And you have to think inside those parameters that make sense, okay? We know that he has the power to do, but we can't count on him to just keep saying power to do. Not when he's already illustrated what he wanted. He's told me what he wanted. Why is he operating outside of what he told me he wanted? That makes no sense. If he's doing that, then there's no need for me to do it. He's already operating outside of what he mandated he want me to do, regardless of, and why am I looking for him to hold to something else? Hello? The collateral he put up was himself. That's why he can't go against it. 
Because to go against it would be to go against himself. And you know what Yahushua told when they called him Beelzebub? He said, if Satan cast out Satan, he said, then his house divided. He said, there's no way I can work against myself and still be in existence. It's going to tear the house up. Hello? The house is going to be torn. I cannot work against myself. So when he put out his word, his collateral was himself. Hello? He has to stop existing. He cannot exist anymore. And he refuses to stop existing, which means that is my guarantee to you that my word is good. You know, the mob would make them do like that. They would swear on the souls of their kids' life. They would, oh, that would be, that was something about they swear on and said, we would kill you to say, we, amazing, we weren't mob. We, y'all remember that? Swear on your grandmama, great. And your grandma, your grandma, swear on your, y'all remember, your, swear on your, did y'all say that? Swear on your grandmama. Swear on your mama. I don't know why I be grandma. Before once you go back to your grandmama. Ain't that right? And you said, my grandma ain't let they said, swear on your grandmama grave. Did y'all ever say that on the head? I don't know why. Where did we get this from? Swearing on, on dead people, swear on their grave. I don't know what's gonna happen to their grave. You'd be like, oh, this tight. <laughs> you know, swear on your grandmama grave. Ain't that right? So that was some people like, nah, I ain't gonna do that. You know what they say? What would they say? No, they say you lying. You lying. That would, come, y'all remember that? Did y'all use Uncle Ted? They would say that. If you ask this, they swear your grandma and grave, you would lie. No, I ain't gonna do that, because you lying. I know you lying. Yeah. Y'all remember that? Yeah. So guess what Yahuwah did? He swore on himself. Yeah. He ain't lying. Show you he ain't lying. Yes, sir. That's the proof he got. Gotta get collateral. That's the guarantee behind it. I ought to stop existing. And he refuses to stop existing. Hello? Based off of a lie. So what he does, he allow these things to come along and to happen to dispel the lie of these other entities, these other deities. These people believe in these other deities. He was like, well, make them swear on themselves. Make them come forth and prove out anything that they can do. He said, well, make them tell you about the things that happened before. Or better yet, tell them to tell you about something that's going to happen, that they're saying going to happen, and it happens. They're going to tell you something you heard and already told you. He didn't come, hypothetically, I'm going to come in in the name of the Father God. The God I came in to prove he real. At 9 o'clock tonight, it's going to be dark. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hilarious. They'll tell you something stupid. The God who I come in the name of, this hypothetical God. Some people are going to get sick later on. <sighs> That's a miracle. He real. Are you serious? Are you serious? This man told about things just like he told. He told her that the powers of Shamayim were going to be shaken. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody was looking at the Kuka being kind of, no, look at all these people. Uh, Sibi, Sabu, what their name? What the president's name in Japan? Y'all know that name? You don't know that name. Chinsu, Abe. Yeah. Yeah, Abe. He, I ain't going to obey. I ain't going to obey. Nothing he said, but he did. Yeah. He should have been obeying Yahuwah. He should have quit sinning and obeyed Yahuwah. So you, him, the other African president, Trump, all these people taking them down. Boris Yeltsin, all these people coming down. These are your power. These are the people that sit up in certain places, and these people are revered and looked to like the kooka beans. Look at a star. What would they get just the fact they use a star? Where did you get that from? They down on their rocks? Where are stars at, they call them? And guess what her position? Was she in the sky? She was in leadership. Yes, That's what he was talking about. He told the But these dumb preachers, what have they been teaching you? Stars. The rocks can't handle no stars falling down here. That's stupid. That's, right. That's just stupid. That's right. He will let you know that these... Now, who told us about this before anybody did? You know, who already told us they were going to be shaken? He told us the stuff going to be shaken. I'm going to take these people down. Think about it. In the, in the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians, he told her that we wrestle not against what? Flesh, but against who? Principality. Huh? In what? In high places. See, he let us know all these principalities. Let all these, these principalities, that's what they call these local governments. Local government have principalities. States have principalities. The county cities have these are principalities. He let you know all these, that's who you've been wrestling against, principalities. Why you think you're in these folk? Who you think Yahushua will fight it? Principalities. 
when Herod had him, what did Herod do with him? Well, P P Pelotus had him and sent him to Herod. That was a different principality. He let him know what he said. He from the region of Galilee. So my government handled him. My principality had him. We gave him over to Herod. Herod had a high district. It was like sending him up to a higher court. The higher courts heard the same thing the Supreme Court doing. What they do? Give it back down to the states or the lower court. That's what you did with abortion. The Supreme Court heard, nope, it's not federal. Send that junk right back down to the states. And that's the same thing Herod did. He said, I want to see it because I heard about it. So I want to look him over. My government heard about it. As soon as they got it, they sent it right back down to the lower courts. So this is your deal. You got to deal with this. That, see, let me ask you something. When did priests ever taught you to think like that? Who do you think he was talking about? He said we wrestle against principality, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why he told you that the power of Shami ain't going to be shaken. I'm going to take him down. That is, who you think when, when, when Yasharal was trying to come out, Yasharal was fighting the Supreme Court? They were fighting the Supreme Court. That, Pharaoh ain't no higher ruling than Pharaoh. Yahuwah right. set them up to show them that these courts do not rule over his decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would the purpose of going to, he let them know, I'm going to show you these governments won't work for you. I want you to go to them. I want you, when you're going, you're basically pleading your case to the courts. Right. Yeah. Mushab was presenting their case, and the book told you he was taught in all the ways of Mizraim. You know their knowledge. You know their information. I want you to go here, and I want you to plead these people's case to get them released. Right. No. No, and ain't no other court got nothing to do with it. Right. So Yahuwah said, I already knew they're going to be let go. Right. But I want you to see that the system is designated against you and not for you. That's right. Wow. Okay. That's why we have to do so much work. That's how we. That's why we had to come in so much understanding. Cause the way you see things, you kind of see it in time in a cartoon type fashion. You don't really see this in reality. He was actually preparing us to show us that. I told y'all before. You who should try to show you the nonviolent campaign saved his life, didn't it? He tried to just show you the system. All the stuff that people are trying to give you, he tried to show you it's not going to work. It didn't work. He still wound up dying. Yep. Right. Right. Hey, and listen, they twisted every word he had. Everything he said, they took it. They said, a man talking about destroying the building. He's talking about blowing the building up. Listen, I never said that. I was talking about my body. But they showed you they learned how to twist your words. So when you hoosh around them, a lot of things they told you, he didn't say around them. In the fourth chapter of the book of Mark, he told them um, that without a Marshall Lee, he didn't open his mouth. That's right. But when he was alone, he expounded all things to his Talmudin, yes, his taught ones. Because he learned, all they're going to do is twist everything I say. Same thing people do with me, they'll twist everything you say. That's the system. That's how the system works against you. It's your goal and your, and, 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 and your responsibility to learn how to get yourself affixed with Allahim. Because these people are not for you. And that's the thing they didn't want you to do. They t it's, it's bad that you were taught that you were part of a country that the country never recognized you. And they told you, you just as American. That was to get you to get a gun to fight for them, fight against their enemies. See, they learned from Mizraim. The only reason Mizraim was aborting your kids because Pharaoh had already did the science and realized. He said, if another Gui come against us and fight, he said, then they'll join with them. He said, so I had to lessen their number. That's why you got drugs, crack cocaine. That's why you got the amphetamine drug. That's why you got the homosexuality. That's why you got so much gun play killing our own neighborhoods with one another. That's why you got the abortion clinic. That's why you got the fentanyl. That's why you got all these drugs and the synthetic marijuana. It's to make sure that when their enemy come to fight against them, you won't make a legion with them. You think if another country came in there in the prison system and started fighting the guard, the guard, the prisoner going to want to come out of the cave to help fight the guard? Who you think they're going to fight? They're going to fight them guards. They're not going to be trying to fight nobody fighting the guard. They're going to I'm trying to get out of prison. So you get them thing to make sure you keep them with a discipline of to look at this is for their better good. Hello? You know, it's amazing how we are accepting the things that happen to us in society, but when you hood do things to us, we mumble and grumble and we complain about them. Hello? 
We lose some. We say, well, you know what I'm saying? What goes around comes around. But when you who allow things to happen, we don't recognize him. We feel like he's wrong and he ain't fair. And things don't work. Certain things in life happen, it just happen. Crash your car. Well, you say, oh, is that the machine is going to go ahead? Well, I mean, what else I'm going to do? That's what it is. When you who let something happen, which all he still controls, we don't recognize. But when things happen to us on the other end, we start to look at him as being almost unfair. We feel like we don't, we don't get the same treatment as other people get. Y'all got it. And it's scary. It's scary how we accept the things in society, but we want to accept things that Mr. Yahoo allows to happen to us. He still controls when he allows these things to happen to show us what? We are hypocrites. We are hypocrites. We don't want his correction. We only want his benefits. That being out, who wants the correction? Man, uh, well, Rudy said he do, you know. I mean, we'll say that to a degree, but if he start to chastise and chastise and chastise, how much of it can you take? That it ain't just you, all of us. But even in that, he recall. He said, except those days should be short. He said, I just can't keep being you. That's what he realized with Yashara. He had to get a break. I mean, I had, you had to raise your hand and whoop your kid. You had to just take a break and keep from killing him. Got to take your breathing and walk away. He said, I wind up hurting him. That's what Yahuwah did. He had to wind up walking off. He said, I wind up killing him. I got to give him a break. Isn't that right? It ain't you got away. He tried to give you a chance to consider and maybe possibly your turn. Hello? If we don't have these conversations and we don't talk about it and get an understanding, then how are we going to grow? How are we going to grow? How are we going to get a benefit out of the teaching if we don't understand what he's doing? We don't even understand where we at. Now, I man, people feel like I'm somewhere between Sheo and salvation. No, you're not. You're either one or the other one. And these people have lied to us so long, we bought into the narrative. Well, I ain't saved, but I ain't like I'm Satan or the devil. Why you not? Why you not? When Cuff told Yahushua to be far from him, that he was going to move in three days, he said he was going up to Jerusalem and he was going to be delivered in the hands of Rosh Hashanah. Sinful men. He said, and then he was going to be crucified. The third, you know what I mean? He said he was going to coom. He was going to resurrect. He said, far be it from you. He said, get behind me, Satan. He said, you're an offense to me. He said, you care for the things of the rocks and not the things of Elohim. Man, you know how hard they got to cut you? That one thing somebody call you, Satan. But when you, who should tell you to get behind me? Well, you get that sword, I said, I'm done. I'm finna follow on my own sword. It's bad, ain't that right? Get on Highway 20. That's it, but stand in that middle lane. And pour on the blacket clothes you can at night. Make sure them folk don't hit break. That after they done hit you and slid about four miles. That's tight. But it started to let him know in conversation how careful you got to be. How considerate you got to be about things. He started letting you know, because some of your caring, he said, that thing ain't about the things out here. That's about yourself. And you can put yourself in a detrimental place. Nobody talked to us and told us that. People just told us and made us think that things are just open to interpretation and just to do. And we start to realize how dangerous it is to just to have your own mind. People say, I want my own mind. That's why he had to come and save you. Because he told you to let this mind be well. So how that work with my own mind? You can have that mind and you can have your own mind. See, that's a conversation. But then let me tell you what. They'll tell you to have your own mind when it comes to the religion, when it comes to decision, but you can't have your own mind when you're being oppressed by your oppressor. Because they tell you, you know what your mind to go out and want to do. That's not the right way to do it. Do it peacefully. Don't block no traffic. And who minded that? That's your mind? That's, you know what? That's a good idea. You right. You right. I know. And that's your mind too, right? That's your own mind. See, that's how people trick you. When it comes down to you thinking for yourself to come to religion, you're not supposed to think. You're supposed to just follow blindly. You're supposed to go and be really, uh, uh, really uneducated or not properly educated about the religion and understand the purpose of it and your purpose. I'm telling you, y'all met people in the world, they don't know why they're here. Y'all have met people sitting around trying to rationalize their existence. Think about it. We are in a world that has been inhabited by billions of people, billions, not just now, billions before us, billions of billions of people, and they're gone. 
Now we're here, we're going to eventually move on from here. And there's going to be another group of people that's going to inhabit it until he ends it all. So what is your purpose? Hello? All right. All these are great answers y'all got. I just want to tell you guys, great answers. Got your own mind. None of these things spark you to question, to wonder. And people say, you know what, I used to, just get out of your mind. Don't think about it. Why shouldn't I think about it? I'm going to leave. So what was my purpose in coming here? What was my purpose? He put man here for a purpose, for his purpose. You weren't put here for your purpose. You get things and you get it and you'll control it. And then you feel like it's unfair when he controls. I don't want to be controlled by the body. Let your furniture, let your pet, let whatever you got, your kid, and don't want to be controlled. And how you going to handle that? Well, he look at that. Then you my pet. You my pet. You my child. I own you. So shouldn't he have some control? Yes, sir. And to prove it, you have control over yours, don't you? Yes, sir. Well, he said, I'm your father. Right. Why should I have no control? You see what I'm saying? That, so all the things he asked us to do, we can really see this as probable and making sense. But yet we don't want to think on things on that level. We just look at it just coming through and just dying or whatever. But in dying, it gives life to others. Just like a seed. Everything else I do makes sense. A seed, if, if everything stopped dying, then everything will die. Did y'all hear what I just told y'all? If everything stopped dying, Seeds, then everything will die. Y'all understand that? You know how we only live in? That's the only reason we live in. Something has to die in order for life to keep existing. So now, if we don't get to understand that balance, then we'll start to fight it. We will fight that balance. And in fighting that balance, you're going to fight your existence. And we have to get to that point. I'm not trying to be a philosopher. This is something the Greeks come up with. They, people try to put and delegate themselves up on these different topics to be. But we have to understand the only reason why you're here, including me, is because somebody died. Hello? That's the only reason you're here. That's the only reason you're here. Something had to die in order for existence to be here. Now, very few people, well, not very few people, yeah, very few, um, have willingly just given up their life. That's why Yahushua talked about it. I wasn't forced into this. I willingly did it. He said, no east, no unashamed took it. He said, I laid it down. I gave it up. He said, I had the authority to do that. He gave him the choice, the power to willingly lay it down or to keep it. But you know, he realized there's going to be an imbalance. There's going to be, if I don't die, everybody's dead. Even Shaul said, we thus concluded, that if one died for all, that was the only way for us to live. One had to die. In the Parashina, when they sat down, and the Kohanim, when they sat down, the separated one, and the what they were called the priest, they sat down, they came up, and when they sat down, they told me it was expedient yes, that one should die for all. Yes, they said it was expedient that one should die for all. And the only reason he died for all, we were already dead. Right. In his death, it gave us life. Right. Right. See, how many of y'all like watermelon? How many of y'all eat watermelon? That's good. How many of y'all like apples? Oranges. That's good. What kind of vegetable? Collard green? Yes, sir. Eat them. Squash? Okay, we're going too far. <laughs> the man just got done. I don't know how the man jump. We collard green squash. I wouldn't even put them in the same cell. You just that's when you go too far, Dash. You can go too far. But now you if you put it with enough other vegetable and cover it up, I can eat it. You gotta bury that bastard. Yeah, you gotta cover that bastard. I don't that bastard gotta be so buried that I eat, I don't even know how to eat it. They don't really have a taste to it like that. But in saying that, but now all of those things, 
in order for you to enjoy them, how many of y'all enjoy eating them? You like them, all of whatever things is. And you know how you eat those? Because something died. How many of y'all eat steak? Lamb? How many of y'all eating it recently? And the only reason you ate it because somebody died. It had to die in order for you to enjoy it, to have it. It had to give itself up. A seed had to give itself up. The baby to give you that enjoyment. They give you that pleasure. Don't you know in order for you to get the pleasure of salvation, it was expedient for this man to die? So you can get the benefit of it. Think about it. When you eat the orange, you eat the apple. There are benefits in all those things, aren't there? Or you just eat them and they just actually don't have anything with them. A lot of these fruits and vegetables carry water. They carry the vitamins you need from A to D to Z to, to C. All these things that you get from them. And the only way you can get those benefits, you ain't going to believe it. Something got to die. See, when you start to understand that, you start learning. Like me, I'd quit the kid. And to be getting the house, I'm kidding to be. Fly. If it's outside, I learned. I used to kill them, just get them, but they don't need to be outside. But these things all play a part. These things all play a part in giving you life. And you know how you let people say, well, leave it alone. Let you be like, leave it alone, kill it. Even the snake, you like, you see it, kill it. I said, snake, I said, I chased the bastard down again. Then you realize they play a part. You'll get overrun with rodents. You'll look at the people that got bit by them, but you ain't looking at how many of those rodents are overrun you. They were showing a thing up there in um, New York, a bodega they got up there at a restaurant, and they were showing up there the glass up, they had the, the sandwich in there. Nice fat rat now you eat. All the people, New York, they'll eat anything. No, they, 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 they'll eat anything. Listen, the place full of rats. Full of rats, fit your neighbor got rats. A road, I mean, that's, that's the building of the place. Oh, it look good when they show you a TV show like that. Place that's filled with rats. They know it's a place full of rats. Man, you got people restaurant feeding on the street. Ain't no gloves on them folks. They're that problem now. They're about the bed cleaning. We done got nothing with, um, with COVID. Everybody, but they'll still handle everything with their glove on. From your money to your food and hand it right, you be like, at least they got on gloves. They just got to touch your money and your food. But people don't care. People don't care. I mean, that's just how it is. Just grab something. That's the life. That's just how we do it up there. I, I mean, we went to California. Somebody wanted to eat out of what well, they wanted. They, said, they find a, 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 one of them vans. One of, and let's get the top. They had a, they had a best top. You had the back. One of them nasty, grimy vans. They have. <laughs> You think I was looking for that van? <laughs> you think I'm finna eat out the back? You finna pop your doors on, and I'm finna eat out the back of your van. <laughs> don't exist like that. My stomach much too sensitive. Listen, I don't play around that stuff. You got a certain name, man. I can't mess up their belly now. I put too much in it before. Yeah. My belly can't get out of the back. Somebody rot up in it and pop the doors over. No. You can keep moving that van. She went to the nasty, nasty ground. You remember winning that, um, what that restaurant we went to up there, probably fame, that they famous little restaurant up there. What's the name of that restaurant? Roscoe. Listen, ain't worth a damn. <laughs> it ain't worth a damn. Listen, I don't know what the hype is. The chick, listen, glad the chicken walk and walk, walk, walk circle around them folk. And they ain't, I'm just pathetic. It really ain't. It's like, man, please, the grits were pissy. They don't know how to make a grit. They don't know how to put sugar in tea. Man, they, they pathetic. Yeah, California they don't, they don't put sugar in tea. They don't believe tea should be drinking with sugar. That's when your brain bad. You got a brown liquid in here needs something to bring them. Even niggas sweet. Ain't that right? You gotta have a little sugar that is sweet. They got just ah, just disgusting. That's how they do in Europe. I'm not in Europe. I don't care about what they do in Europe. I don't drink tea when I went. When I went to Europe, I didn't go to Europe to drink no tea. I went into a Chinese restaurant. I seen. I asked him. I said, "Let me ask you this." I said, uh, "I said they, I said they eat dogs over here and stuff." So no, 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 no. So no, no, sweets. No, they don't, they don't eat dogs. They don't have any of that. I said, "Okay." I said, "Yeah." I said, "No, no, no. They don't do that. That's clear. The sweets don't do it." I said, "Let's go to the Chinese restaurant." We roll up in there, winning that thing, just and they complain. I really don't eat. I said, "Just you know, be quiet now." I really don't want. To. I said, "Let's go on in the play. The man taking the time. Let's go on in here now." We went in the Chinese restaurant, went down. They had a buffet in there. The bar was this big. <laughs> I looked down them three items. <laughs> oh, he stuck me. I was gone. I looked down. They have a three. I'm, you know, you looking that long. Over here, we got ball. You got ball. You was zigzag. Yeah. This is this the bar. This the bar right here. Do you remember that, don't it? Bar, but by this big, I'm standing here at that bar. We stand here looking. Just start sniggling. <laughs> I said, um. I look, I told the man, 
I said, look, Pastor Daniel, I said, Justin don't eat Chinese food. <laughs> I told, him, I told him, I said, I said, I said, yeah, I said, I said, I said, I said, just don't eat Chinese food. I said, yeah, he don't like it. I said, we can go somewhere else. I said, he said, no, not eat. I said, he don't, he don't. I said, he don't, he don't, he don't eat Chinese food. I didn't mean, no, no, this, this was a bad idea to come in. I like a Chinese restaurant and they don't do dog and cat. That's the only thing I be worried about, that dog and that cat. You know what I'm saying? So he got dog and cat. I'm like, I'm going to eat something. I see that bar three selection. I thought about my brother. I said, I can't do that there, man. This ain't even right. Ain't that right? It wasn't fair. Y'all agree, don't you? Yeah. Respect what the man eat. I'm, no, I'm good. I can eat. No, you can't. <laughs> I know what he can eat. I know more he can eat better than he can eat. Oh, he eat. <laughs> trying to convince himself he can eat it. Y'all crazy. All right, we're going to talk a little bit. Let's see what does say, Mr. Hood, so we can get them. How about that? Y'all ready to go on the trip? Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to take y'all on a voyage. For Husha, ain't it? Oh, I'm gonna come back over here and have that one. All right. <clears throat> Good deal. See, I know we're using for those at home that are watching and interested. We're looking, we're using the Word program. The Word program will give you um, the Dewey Rim. Here, here, they got the Greek on this side. So, in the New Testament, you won't find they have a Greek version of the New Testament. I think it was, if I'm correct, I'm not sure. I think it was written after. The reason you find this one is what they call it, Johnny Come Lately. But um, the Dewey Rim, the Latin, and the King James perversion. So, Okay. All right, let's get ready to roll. Let's see what it does say, Mr. Yahuwah. Let's get our foundation first, right? Yes, sir. All right, what's our foundation? All right. For whatever Nikata before, Nikata for our alignment. That's right, to teach us, to show us, and to instruct us. All right. <coughs> that we, Come on. through endurance, that we. Do what? What's the Marshall Lee? Thank you. So that's what we're looking at, not quitting. That's the end of the day. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. So we understand the writers, and that's the whole purpose of it. So if right now, if you hadn't quit, it's working for it. Well, let's say that. I don't, I don't want to say it's working yet until. Now, the only reason he would tell me don't quit, that, guy, that has to tell me that there are situations that's going to occur that can push me to the brink of giving up. Y'all got it? And the writings are there to let me know that even when he told us in the 24th chapter, except those y'all mean should be shortened. So that's to give me a consolation that as bad as it getting, it's going to get worse. And when it gets really, 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 really bad, he'll cut it off. Y'all got it? Okay. Let's see. Let's see some. Okay. Come on. And the coon. A reward. That's right. A reward. A consolation. Come of the on. Be, of the writings. Plural. Might have tikva or your call. That's right. Your call or tikva, <clears throat> which is expected weight. That's our goal. We are expecting something at his appearance. Isn't that right? So now I guess uh, it's important for us to kind of. Look at, we, we, well, we didn't kind of talk about something, but then we kind of went away from something, so I don't know what we wind up doing anyway, but we did, I don't know, let me see. For whatever reason, I'm going to get this out of my life. That's out of my life, get out of my mind, huh? 
My last song, got to get you out of my life. How many of y'all remember them? How many of y'all remember Najee? Sax saxophone player. You know, somebody tried to act like he and his ex Karen. I ain't gonna call Chris name, but when he was big, wasn't he? Najee. Who I remember y'all remember Najee? You remember Najee? Yeah, I remember Najee. Yeah, I told him. Yeah, Najee was him. Yeah, he was serious about it. He was the, he was the answer to Kenny G. <laughs> Whenever they get a white one, we got to get a black one. Isn't that right? But you never heard of Najee? Yeah, Najee played that sad. Y'all remember Najee for real? Man, Najee was big. Yeah. Huh? Herbert had. That man was just playing that doom 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 He was just an instrument. He just put a bunch of beats together, a bunch of sounds together. Yeah, Herbert Herbert Hancock. He had a short run. You remember Herbert Hancock? John Hancock was in Chicago. The John. He wasn't bigger than Herbert the Kirby. That were the trash cans in Atlanta. They used to call them. They used to call them things. You used to roll them out there. They used to call them the Herbert the Kirby. Y'all remember? Y'all remember that? I remember Atlanta first came out, they dropped that thing out, because you just sit your bad. They came out, you know the little push thing where you put your garbage in there? You, in Atlanta, they were called the Herbie, they were called Herbie Curb, Herbie the Curb. So, because you get them, you push them out to the curb. You put your trash inside, and you put and you roll it out. Man, you were doing it big time back then. Herbie the Curb. They ain't tell like they cheat when they got in there. Put two bags in there, and the whole thing start busting at the bottom. All right, let's, let's, we'll finish this. Let's say that. Listen. As he spake these dabarim, many a man on him. I'm sorry. Hold on, this is nine and thirty. Oh no, nah, I apologize. No, no, you good. Eight and you right. You good. Eight okay. thirty. Y'all probably at eight and thirty. What y'all at? No, eight and thirty. Are they like a nine back now? That's tight. All right, come on. As he spake these dabarim, many a man on him. Okay. Then said Yahushua to those Yahudim, which are man on him. If you do what? Continue in my debar. What happened? Then are ye my Talmudim indeed. And what's going to happen? And ye shall know the Amat, and the Amat shall make you free. Okay, they didn't roll up the 30. So that's what he said. You're going to know the truth, and the truth is going to make you free. We, 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 we talked about that um, this last Wednesday, they called it, and uh, it struck me because I, I want to make sure we kind of understood that with knowing the Amat. Knowing the Amat, what, what can kind of work against you and what can kind of work against you. Okay, work for your favor and work against you in favor. Let's look at something. Since I'm bringing it up, see if that's the. Um, whoo. Let's see something. See if it's the 18th chapter of the book of 18th chapter book of Yukonine. Since we're talking. 18. Probably go down to 19 is what I'm thinking. Make it 19. Make it 19 and 1. Let's do that. All right, let's see. That's how they work out. Listen. 19 and 1? Yeah, that'd be fine. 19 and 1. Yes, sir. Then Pelotus. Oh, oh they're looking at 18. 19 <laughs> and 1. I did call 18, but I want 19. Let me say, come on. Then Pelotus therefore took Yahushua and scourged him. Mm -hmm. And the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe, mm -hmm. and said, Hail, Malak of the Yaudim. That's tight. I'm going to move somewhere else now. <clears throat> and they smote him with their hands. Mm -hmm. okay. Pelotus therefore went forth again and said unto them, 
Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Okay, listen. Then came Yahushua forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pelotus saith unto him, Behold the Ish. Let, when, let me, uh, hold on for a second. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> he said, Behold, he brought him back before them and said, Behold, and what happened? The, the Ish. Okay, behold the man. He wanted them to see him. Okay. Then came, sorry, when the Rosh Kohanim, therefore, and the officers saw him, they sighed out, saying, it's tight. It's crucify tight. him. Hold on, stop for a minute. My mind turning. It's tight. It's tight. It's tight. It's tight. Time to go. You need to go down to it. Mm. 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 Okay, that's tight. That's tight. That's tight. That's tight. We might have to take a trip. Okay, let's take a trip. We'll do it. Let's see. Okay. Go to um Ooh, all our shamut. They'll call it Exodus. 12, how about four? <clears throat> Mar sheep. 22. 22. 12. Just tight. We'll make it work. 22 and 12. All right. Ooh, Allah 12 and 20, 12 and 4. Okay? Listen. And if the household be too little for the lamb. This is 4. Take me up to 3, 2. Take me up to 2. Let's see. I'm trying to watch. I watch all of them. This is the one I'm going to give more reference to, more or less because the Greek is older. Okay? All right, listen. This Yarek shall be unto you the beginning of Yarek. It That's shall the be the of first Yarek of the Shana to you. So he told her this is going to be the first Yarek or the beginning of your Shana of your year. That couldn't be on the same time platform that everybody else was as well. Don't make sense. He could have just left time like it was. But you got to remember something. He's taking the people to make them badal, which is separate. You can't be separate if you're doing the same thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Even the book told us with Yahushua, for such a Rosh Kohan became us who was harmless. Were the people harmless? No. Undefiled. No. Was the people, were the other, were the people undefiled? No. Mm -hmm. That also would make him badal. <laughs> that only really made sense. Mm. They said the one that came for us and the one that took on our flesh, that was the whole thing he wanted to realize, that he became us. He became in, he came in the flesh, but he was harmless. We harmed him, remember? Yeah. Pelotus told him he found no father. What we say? Crucified. He was harmless. He came down to a people. He came up because of our sins, right? Mm -hmm. So we couldn't be undefiled, could we? But yet he was, and that made sense. And he was separate. Yeah, that's why they had a problem with him sitting down. They tried to judge him because he sat down and ate with Kataim. But he let the people know, you really don't know what you're doing. <laughs> okay? You really don't know what you're doing. I don't have the same behavior these people that I'm sitting here eating with. Okay? Right. The problem you got with other people, they had the behavior of the people they yeah. were eating with. Right. Okay? They wanted to blame him for eating with them, but he let them know why. He said, they that a whole. <laughs> so let me get this straight then. So everybody with COVID should have doctors with COVID. If you got cancer, your doctor should have cancer too, right? If you got cancer, you want a doctor that probably what? Cancer free? If you got COVID, you're going to want a doctor that's doctor free? If you're a sinner, you're going to want a savior that's sin free. That's how he's going to heal you. Think about it. You got cancer, your doctor, who I got it too. You're like, I don't think it. But you're like, well, why not? We got to say, because you're going to look at it. You can't help yourself. Uh, then it's going to come to pass of saying, what? Physician? 
He came down here and he had sin, Katain, how is he going to help us? So he made, so your doctor come in there with you and have a thing, you, are, you, are, you come in here and you got cancer, I'm checking on you, working on you. He says, oh, what you in here? You got cancer too. I mean, look at you, are you serious? I'm trying to hear the man when he, who has cancer. I'm trying to hear her, she got COVID. Oh, you got COVID too, you will. Hey, look, you don't know what you're doing. I'm in here, I only came to try to heal this daughter who had, uh, who had the disease. And heal this our king that had the disease. Don't blame me and think that I have it. He sent them to a people that had it and somebody who already had broke it, had broken from it. Y'all got it? Okay. That makes sense for y'all? Okay. All right, so that makes sense for the separation of the times. Come on. Speak ye unto all the Adah of Yasharal, saying, in the tenth yum of this Yarek, they shall, they shall take to them every ish a lamb. Hold on. A who? Every ish a lamb. Mm hmm According to the bed of their abu. See that? Well, they put it in the families. They put the abu of their families, of their mishpachah. A lamb for in bed. They're probably saying the fathers because they're going to look at typically the man the head of the house. Come on. See that? Every man a lamb for his household. All right? Let's see. And if the household be too little Hold for on, the lamb. Move yet. Go ahead. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his rayon ne next unto his bed take it according to the number of the nephash. Every each according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Reckon it for the lamb. Okay. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first Shanah. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. So now, now what we're looking at with this, come on. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th yum of the same Yarek. And the whole kahal of the Adah of Yasharal shall kill it in the evening. <laughs> so, toward the evening. Go ahead. And they, shall, and they shall take of the dawn and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper doorpost of the house, of the bed, wherein they shall eat it. Mm -hmm. And they shall eat the, the basar in that layla, roast with fire, and masut lakum, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Mm -hmm. Eat, it not, eat oh. not of it raw, nor sodden at all with maim, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. Mm -hmm. And ye shall let nothing of it remain unto the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Now the Greeks recorded, and a bone of it shall not be broken. And a bone of it shall not break. But that which is left of it till the morning ye shall burn with fire. Okay. Now, um, what we're looking at, and the reason why we came here, we're based out the conversation in the 19th chapter of the book of Yukonai. If you could say, if you could clearly see Pilate came and Pilate started to have some conversation with the adult, uh, go over to the book of Barashit, the 22nd chapter. They call Genesis Barashit, which means in the beginning, Ula Shemut, and these were the names. So now we're going to the beginning. If you want to find out sometime where things originated from, you go back to the beginning. If you have a situation going on and somebody came up, asked about the situation, they say, well, ho, ho, let's start at the beginning. You can just start in the middle of the situation. They say, well, let's go back to the beginning. So we want to find out how did we get to this point. And the reason why we had never fixed it, people always start in the middle. Yeah. Slavery. Is that the beginning of the situation? Slavery is the result of a situation that started before. So when a nigga... Uh, the so-called nigga, what they call himself, is out on the street, he marching, he don't even understand what's the beginning of your situation. Hello? That's how you fix it. The reason they don't fix it, because they start in the middle of the situation. What we don't have, we don't have, and you don't have it because of why? You got to go back to the beginning. Let's go back and look at the situation, figure out what happened, okay? All right, let's see what happened. This is Barashit. Uh, Okay, well, then give me 11. I put 12, that's fine, but give me 11. No, nah, give me 10. No, nah, okay. Well, you know what? Mm-mm-mm. 
Mm. We could do that too. Oh goodness. Do this. Go ahead and give me one. All right. Just for passage sake. Listen. And it came to pass after On the these left things. is your is your Greek, oldest, second oldest, your Rome, your Latin, then King James Perversion. All right, listen. And it came to pass after these things that Elohim did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Hold what you got. See, stuff like this is bad. It's kind of bad, grime in the sense, because they lead people in the wrong way. Uh, okay, tempted. They should have said tested. Tempted is to give you something, to try to lure you into something, and that's not what he did. Because when you read the book of Jacob, it said, Allahim cannot be tempted with cartoon, sin. Neither does he tempt any man. So they use the word tempt. I'm sure dip, tempt might have more than one definition, but using tempted and then read over in your code when it said that Elohim can't be tempted, neither tempt he any man, it alludes to it though he is not telling the truth. Right. But it's only telling you he was testing right. Abraham, Abraham. So tempted, I'm sure, has more than one. Can we see the definition for tempt? Appreciate it. Oh, this is the uh, thing to test. Nasha is how they're saying you will pronounce this. Nasha, Nasha, okay? Naka, Nasa. Well, this is the phonic spelling, okay? So they, they wrote this to get you to enunciate this. Okay? Nasa, and they're saying it's basically the phonic way of spelling, okay? And it means to test, okay? To attempt, to adventure, or say it's starting to go to prove, and it has tempt or to try, okay? So he was actually, first definition, he was testing Abraham. Y'all got it? This was a test, okay? He was not trying to lure him in committing Qatar. He was only giving him a test, okay? All right, let's see. Approving uh, Abraham. All right, let's see what happened. Two. And All he right. said, take now thy being, thine only being, Yasakak, whom thou ahab, and get thee into the, link, the rocks of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the harim, which I will tell thee of. Well, the Greeks are one of the high places before that. Go ahead. And Abraham cum early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young Anashim with him and Yasakak his ben and clave the wood for the burnt offering and cum up and went into the Malcum of which Elohim had told him. Uh-huh. Then... On the Shalishi Yum, Abraham lifted up his um and saw the Malcum afar off. Mm -hmm. And Abraham said unto his young Anashim, Abide ye here with the ass, and I, and I and the lad will go yonder in Shaka and come again to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go up and I'm going to adore Allahim, and, and I'll return and, to you. Go ahead. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Yasakak his being. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And mm -hmm. Yasakak spake unto Abraham his Abba, and said, My Abba. And he said, Here I am, here am I, my being. And he said, Behold the fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Well, it makes sense that he would probably ask him where it was. Well, I don't know. Well, yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of more or less are asking a question of what is it? Okay. Okay. All right. I can make sense out of it. Go ahead. And Abraham said, My being, Allahim will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Okay. And they came to the Malcum, which Allahim had told him of. Mm -hmm. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Yasakak his being and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his being. Um. And the Malachi of Yahuwah called unto him out of Shamayim and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Mm -hmm. Come on. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, yeah. neither do thou anything unto him. Mm -hmm. For now I know that thou 
Yara Alahim, seeing thou hast not withheld thy being, thine only being from me. Okay. And Abraham lifted up his own and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his being. That's good. That's good. All right. Now we'll go back and we'll look and we'll consider. How about that? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's go back and look at some of the 19th chapter. See if it makes sense to you when we read now, okay? 19 and 1, 5. Another one, hold me. Uh, okay, we'll go. We'll get, me to, we'll get Matthew Yahoo from here, though. Matthew Yahoo. 27. Mark 23. Be fine. Come on. All right, come on. Then Pelotus therefore took Yahushua and scourged him. Mm-hmm. Scourged him and beat him. Okay, listen. And the soldiers, soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe mm-hmm. and said, Hail, Malak of the Yahudim. And they smote him with their hands. Uh-huh. Pelotus therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. Y'all see that? He will bring him forth so you'll see he didn't find no blame in him. All right, come on. Then came Yahushua forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pelotus saith unto them, Do Be- what? Behold the each. That's tight. What happened at six? When the Rosh Kohanim, therefore, an officer saw him, they cr- sighed out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pelotus saith unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. That's right. Come on. Then the Yahudim answered him, We have a Torah. Man. By our Torah, he ought to move. That's the truth. They are exactly right. They have a Torah, and by their Torah, he ought to move. Listen. Because he made himself the bin of Allahim. That's what they said. All right, let's look at something. We're going to go over and look at the 27th chapter of the book of Matthew. Matthew, about 23, be fine. Twenty-seven, Matthew, they call it Matthew. See if it makes sense. This from just reading. Us reading, and we just move along, and we just see how we put this together, how it makes sense. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, I'll show you how you read and you don't pay attention. I'll show you how I read and I pay attention. Now I got to think real quick. Listen. And the governor said, why, what Rosha hath he done? Okay. Make it 22 then. Yes, 21. <clears throat> Let's see what the conversation was about. Listen. The governor answered and said unto them, whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? Who? They said, bar Abba. That's what they said. They want them to release bar Abba. Listen. Pelotus saith unto them. What did he say? What shall I do then with Yahushua? Which is Ka- which is Kara, Mashiach. Which is Kara? Oh, yeah. Okay, Kara, come on. They all say unto him. Do what? Let him be crucified. Slay him. Listen. And the governor said, Why? Huh. What Rosha hath he done? Okay. But they sigh out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. The people actually had more sense than everybody else around. Listen. When Pelotus saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, Done he what? took Maim and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the dumb of this Sadak person. Do what? See ye to it. You take care of that. Washed his hand. That's signifying. People would do that. Wash their hands, showing a purification. Come on. Then answered all the arm and said, His dumb be on us, and? our Benin. Yes. Then released he Baraba unto them. Having that what? And when he had scourged Yahushua, he delivered him to be crucified. So what happened? Then the soldiers of the governor took Yahushua into the common hall. Y'all see what they did? And tell them what happened. And gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. I couldn't imagine what they did. And they stripped him. And did. Put on him a scarlet robe. And? When they had plaited a crown of thorns. What did they do? They put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. That's good. 
Do you all understand what they were doing? A couple of things happened that made sense when I was reading, when we first read the 19th chapter. It all made clear <laughs> sense. First of all, when Pelotus got him, Pelotus tried to tell the people, look at it. This is the man. Basically, he was telling them this is the one that was caught in the thickets. This is the one you got to kill. See, Yasakot would have been born of the Abba. The person they let go was by Abba. They let go the son of Abraham. Right. Because of the one that was caught in the thickets. Right. That's why they had to put it on his head before they crucified him. That's why it made sense for him to kill him. They told him, we have a Torah. And by our Torah, he ought to moot. Because mm. Elohim was going to give his son. The Torah made sense. Especially when they saw him caught in the thickets. You were supposed to release the son. Mm -hmm. That's what Abraham did. They told him, to, don't kill him. Why? The one in the thickets. That's why he had to let Bar Arba go. Mm. The one that was born of the father had to be let go. Right. Right. Because of the one in the thickets. Right. Now, we just had to make sure the one in the thickets had no blame. Yes, sir. That's why Pelotus told us, I find no, no fault. fault. Yes, sir. The people had to behold him. Yeah. Okay. That's the same thing you can learn try 10, 129. Behold, this is the one we're supposed to be killing. He was letting the people know, this is the one we're going to slay. Even the lamb, what do we know about the lamb for us? We're looking at the one that was going to be sacrificed. The one that was going to be caught in the thickets. So like Abraham took him and he bolted him. He was ready to put his son and he, and he took that lamb. He bolted him right down to that wood. And those two ends, just like the doorpost. Same thing you learned. That's where the two came from. Look at you nailing him down to the doorpost. Hello? The doorpost is the top end of that. We're just going to put blood on the doorpost. Same thing you'd have learned if you'd have read in the 19th chapter of the book, uh, Shaphatim. Let's see right quick. 19th chapter of the book of Shaphatim. They call Judges. 19, jump down about 22 probably. So I'd be one y'all, we want to read and get understanding. We don't want you to be reading no story. I don't have time to be reading no story. I'll be honest with you. I don't know, probably 23. Let's see. Okay, let's see what happened. Listen. And the Ish, the Adun of the Bet, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my king, nay, I applaud you, do not so rosha. He called them transgressors by the Greeks. Hold oh, Batman 22 again. Confident. And while they were confident in their laws, then when, behold, the unashim of the city, men, the name of, they called them Bilal, didn't it? Yes, sir. They're transgressors. Okay. All right, come on. Be set the bed round about. 23. Okay. All right, come on. And the Ish, the Adun of the bed, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my king, nay. I plow you, do not so rosha. Seeing that this each is coming to my bed, do not this folly. He was trying to tell him don't come in his house. Come on. Behold, here is my both, a maiden, and his concubine. Then, them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what see it too unto you. But unto this each do not so vile a thing. Mm -hmm. But the unashamed will not hearken but not Shama to him, so the East took his concubine and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her and abused her all the Layla until the morning. Mm -hmm. And when the Yum began to spring, they let her go. Then, then came the Asha in the dawning of the Yum. Y'all see when she came? In the dawning of the Yum. And what did she do? And fell down at the dollar of the East Beth where her Adun was till it was light. Mm-hmm. And her Adun come up in the morning and opened the dollar of the bed and went out to go his Darat. And behold, the Asha, his concubine, was falling down at the dollar of the bed, and her hands were upon the threshold. See now? Threshold, the door open, down at the bottom of the floor, she had her hands so, on it. 
It's important for it, just like Yahushua, when he came, he tried to get the people to behold his hand and his feet. That's right. And I also told you about how they took him and they, and they tied their feet. It's important for people to watch how they just bound him, how they took him. They do the same thing to us now, how they handcuff us. Mm-hmm. Same thing through, you look at our wrist too, the same thing. Then they shackle our legs. Mm-hmm. These people, the feathers and chain, that's the same thing. They took them, they would hook them, and then they would do their feet. A lot of, they, a lot of stuff they did ain't never went away. A lot of stuff we think and new ain't new. It's old behavior these people have. Well, don't worry about it. I try to show about our hands on the threshold and on the door when she came and she the feel the same thing with Yahushua. Y'all see that? Here's a woman who had to give her life in order to save somebody else. He was from Yehuda. He was of Yehuda. Hello? She gave her life to save the man of Yehuda. Isn't that right? And for the house. That's the same thing we look at Yehushua. Hello? She was sufficient for that house. Hello? And we took a land. We were supposed to take one sufficient for the eating for the house. That's satisfied. They tried all. He offered the other women too, didn't he? They look at that more than what we want. He said, you can take my daughter and her. She was sufficient for the house. Don't y'all know that Yahushua was sufficient for That's what we were talking in the 12th chapter book of Uala Shamu. The lamb was for the satisfying of the house. What satisfied for the house? It was her. She became the Zabak, the slaughter. Because later on, he would wind up cutting her up and disperse her out to all 12 of the Matah. She was sufficient enough to feed them all. That's the same thing we look at one was sufficient enough to take care of all. Let's see what he did. A little, a little more of him there right quick. Let's see what he did. And what happened? And he said unto her, up, and let us be going. But none answered. Then the each took her up upon it and asked. Why? And the each come up and got him unto his malcum. Now the difference on him, the book told you why. Up go, and she answered not, for she was. Moved. She was dead, and he took her upon his ass, and he went to his Malcolm, his place. Listen. And when he was come unto his bed, he took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her. How? To, together with her bones into 12 pieces and sent her into all the coasts of Yasharal. She was sufficient. She was sufficient for the eating for all of them, for 12 matah. Remember, it started in the house. That's what you were told when you came out of Mizraim. It was about the house. Mm -hmm. A lamb according to every man's eating. It was for the house. And remember, now if it was too much because y'all were too little, then you were supposed to share it with your Rayah. That's why he gave it to all of the 12 of the It's enough for all of us. That's why they could see it, they could all consent to. It was an expedient that one should move for all. He was sufficient enough to feed all of us, to satisfy. <sighs> Don't worry about it. What y'all trying to do? I don't believe this. I don't believe it. Because y'all get a lot of information. I want y'all to understand what you've been doing. These people have been taking us on fairy tale rides. These people haven't explained that enough to make sense. Why would you have a man on the tube beside a man stabbing Jeremy here and his name is born of the father and he the one released? What's the symbolism? This is Jeff from reading the 19th chapter. I was reading it with you guys. I was looking, I was like, wow. This makes a lot of sense. All this can be referenced. All this can be shown. All this can be proven. Why? And you know what the Christian church said? Why they had to take my Jesus? Which symbolized you don't know what you're doing. The people knew better. The fact that they even told you that his dumb is going to be on us. Why? Hands. Oh, we got a mouth on here. Tell them why. Exactly right. Jump over to the ninth chapter of the book of, what was you going to say? Abore. You will say because he visited the sin of the father upon the children. But that what y'all gonna say? Testament. Yeah, testament. The testator. I will read the ninth chapter. They call Hebrews. Jump down about 24, I think it is. 
Arborine. No, 27 is last, 23. Yeah, 24, let me see. Let's say, let's say this is what I want. Listen. For Mashiach is not entered into the Kodash Malkum made with hands, see that? which are the figures of the Mat, but into Shamayin itself, now to appear in the presence of Allahim for so us. 19, got to go back up. Okay, go back to 19. Give me 17. 19, 17. I know we're getting close to the end. I got to forgive him. I don't have no manuscript. Gang have no cue card. <laughs> <laughs> he let a screen down in my mind. Said, this is the way it go. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I really just give me a mind. We're going up to 15. Let's see what different is. I right, start 15. Listen. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New, Te new Testament. That's right. Which would be a new berith for us. New berith. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I would say that, which is the covenant for us. Go ahead. That by means of moot for the redemption of the transgression. Y'all see it here. What we keep finding out was significant. Moot. Death is important for us. See, we never looked at death as an important. Listen, at it. He, he's the mediator. He kind of medi a mediator is somebody that solves a dispute between two. Okay? Or two or more parts. That's what a mediator does. Now you come back right back to where we started by talking about the death. So now you need to learn the value in move. Because we never learned it. We learned the fear of move. We had to learn the value of it. Y'all got it? It yes, wasn't sir. just him being a mediator. And where he mediates for us is in death. Because that's somewhere all of us got to go. So he's gone through basically to set for the passage for us. He cleared the way so you can come through. Hello? The way was blocked. That's it. So we're looking at somebody that's going to mediate for us in order for him to get to the Abba where we're trying to go. The transformation you got to make, you got to go through moot. He cleared the way so we can get to the Father. The, let me tell you what. The way was blocked. Let me tell you how I know the way was blocked. How, who in here give me a hand tell me how you know the way was blocked? Tell me why. They straight path. Tell me why, Bishop. He said, no, he said, not a man that had commit sin. What you going to say? How he blocked the way to the tree of life? What you going to say? Hold on. Well, they were blind. Before I get you, I saw some other hand. Ryan? Set by me. It's close to what I want. Go ahead. When he said, um, um, I knew I was in trouble. Now they tell me to remove the stone back from the cabal? Over the well. You're talking about your cold did. <laughs> and he roll back. Well, well I, I'll tell you what I look at. Go ahead. I was going to say, he asked him, he's been so long time with him. he been so long time with him. They didn't know him. They didn't know him. He did. So he did tell me he was the way. And the fact he told you he was the door. Mm -hmm. What he told him now? He was the door. <clears throat> If he was the door and he didn't get there until he got there, that meant it was blocked. Mm. There wasn't no enter. That's how, that's so mediating for us and not the selling the spirit was, I'm so pissed with y'all guys, I don't block the way. Mm. There's no way you could have got in. There's no way you could have got, none of us. You couldn't get in. So the fact that he came to let us know that he was the doll was letting us know that passageway been set for us now. Y'all got it? In the book says, so an opening was, given, was ministered to us. He shall talk about how open it was at the door. That's him. That's what he did. He came to serve as being the door. I'm going to be the passageway for you to get through so you can get to the Abba. Y'all got it. But for us internally, we have to know how to get our nefesh to a point of recognizing it needs to connect back to the person that gave life to it. Hello? We need to get back to him. But we hadn't recognized that. We just kind of been going. I, I, I know I won't be saved. But you don't really understand what you're saying. You don't really comprehend how important it is for you to be saved. How there was not, there was actually going to be said that there was no way for you to get back other than by him. There's no other way you could have done it but by him. Y'all got it. No more than uh, Jacob and all of the Matar could have ever got to Mizraim and had gotten, had gotten plenty of to be able to eat and to do all these different things they had except that Yosef was the door. He was the key component. Hello? I mean, he was, the, he was the key to them being able to be brought down. Everybody else was starving and dying. 
Hello? Even the book tell us, when he told us, look, how y'all understand that, just in thinking? He told us to Palau that you'll be found worthy to escape the temptation that's coming. Hello? You called him escape. Don't y'all know that family's over the whole of rocks? <clears throat> There were people that didn't escape it. They went into Mizraim. Everybody couldn't go into Mizraim. Mizraim, you couldn't support all them people. That man was putting up food for, for the Mizraim. He was putting up for Pharaoh. And for the, for the people of Mizraim, that food wasn't for nobody else. You know how they got that food. Where they got it, where it sustained them. They had to come into Mizraim. How y'all think y'all gonna, how you think you gonna get out of this? Y'all don't even realize, don't y'all know there's a shortage here? Video been sent out to y'all, showing y'all. These charges, I tell y'all, these are few is running out. <clears throat> these people have a real low supply of food. These truck drivers are running from truck. The guys are getting out. They, a lot of our people getting out. They're going to force them out. And when they get out, it's going to be too expensive for them to get back. Mm -hmm. Too many people call it and make too much money. I don't know what y'all listen. They're going to run you out. If you don't make a legion and you don't get you a legion with people, you're done. Abraham was a businessman. That man that just come up on that stuff and that the man made a leisure with people. That those people had his back. If something happened, we together. When they found out something affected him, they were with Abraham. They said, this, we make an agreement. We in business together him. If something affect you or affect your family, your loved one, it affects us. And these people went with him. The book said they were confederate. And the folk come in here and we are, man, confederate, confederate. They stole it from us. We got people to come together and make a legion. These southern states make a legion. All of them come together and say, we ain't let them do abortion down here. We're going to keep it. They've been against these. Listen, the northern one came out, the northern, eastern, all of them came here, man. Y'all drug all that homosexual and these gay right bills down here with y'all. Y'all soften up them kids. Run out of them shell toe shoes with your ankles touching. I just saw a walk around here, man, with their ankle touching. <laughs> Brought them old saw way down here and messed up our kids, man. So that we had, we was a, it was what they call a Bible belt. A lot of this stuff never would have worked down here. Man, seeing a man with a dress on and a hat, man, folks, look, they were sick. That's right. We had maybe one little sis on the keyboard <laughs> and the nurses' guild and the choir. And the director. <laughs> and the two and three of the preachers. <laughs> but we ain't have no sisters. <laughs> Not them upstate sisters. <laughs> they were good, God fearing Christian <laughs> sisters. Ain't that right? And we had one of them in the kitchen. And he could fry some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but we ain't have no bunch of sisters down here. <laughs> Straight from California. By way of New York. That's right. Who responded for most of our citizens, uh, Greek? New York or California? Who? California. California. That's right. They messed them up. God, I wasn't knew they were showing them all that pain on their face and pain on their body. Still out there want to get naked in front of these kids. Mm. I don't know what the fascination about getting out here naked in front of the kids. And the folks sitting around, we're going to teach about, we, gonna, we ain't got to teach about, we already know what you're doing. What the last, how you gonna teach you about homosexuality? We already know what it is. We already know y'all deal picking each other to death. That's right. It don't make no sense. What are you gonna teach her that gonna make us say, wow, this is right? That's stupid. It don't make sense. It nope. makes no sense to have a conversation. Why, why would you be in school trying to push that? We can't teach them heterosexual, but you can teach them homosexual. How you got gay pride and we can't have heterosexual pride? That's right. That's right. Our pride coming to tell you, we didn't have to, we never had to have a straight pride. Because everybody was straight. Soon they get in the way, now they got to make it about pride on them. They got to have it for, if you're so proud, shut your mouth and go on. Quit trying to force it on us. I ain't going to no sense of convention trying to push nothing on. I already know y'all going to die in there. So I mean, lock the door, let you get in there and just bang each other to death and kill each other. So I'm bleeding all out your behind, what you getting out of it? Is that dumb? You're bleeding, you're sick, hey, they're laying around on each other. What's wrong with you? That disgusting. All right, come on. And for this cause, he is the mediator for the new bereath, that by means of moot, for the redemption of the transgressions. See that? For the redemption of the transgressor. That's why you understand the point of the death. 
because he's trying to make up for a bad aspect for other people that's accounted as the sinners. That's the reason of the move. What was the wages? What's the compensation for committing Moot. the talk? Move. So it was important for him to do what? So the situation, when did it change? The wages of sin is death. When did he get rid of it? Well, they said the Old Testament done away with. He told Adam the day that he committed Qatar, he was going to what? Surely move. So that should have stopped since Jesus came. Shouldn't have stopped. Since Jesus came, that's in the Old Testament. The, way that the day you eat of it, you were going to die. Is it the tree or is it the fact that he committed Qatar? The only reason the tree was Qatar because he told him not to do it. It was teaching you the value of sin. You know, people say, I don't get it. I don't get it. What did he do? What did he do wrong? All he did was just eat from a tree. That because you have a piss poor value system as a Christian. <clears throat> Anytime you do anything he tell you not to do, it's all detrimental. Whether it's homosexual, whether it's lying, whether it's adultery, whether it's zanu fornication, all of it's the same. That's what he's trying to get you. The reason why it's wrong, because I told you not to do it. Wait, how parent, your kid go do something, you told him, well, you ain't do wrong. I just told you not to do it. How many of you have told your kid not to go outside and pick? You say, I want you to go outside. Anybody been, oh, you've been told that. How many of your kids went outside? You said, well, you ain't do wrong because outside ain't wrong. I just told you something. What do you, what do, you do? You chest out. Why? It's so bad. Because outside is wrong. No, it's because I told you not to go outside. See, these people are so dumb. They're so dumb. That's okay. We should eat from no fruit tree today. Why your mama didn't lock her thighs and pump her leg like three times when your head came out? Late-term abortion, that's all. But you'd be that dumb. The problem was not the eating of the pari. The problem is I'm trying to teach you the value of Qatar. And when you rationalize and look at but I don't see nothing wrong with it, though, to me, though. But to me, then I don't respect what he's telling me. Just like your child, when you tell them not to do something, it's with touch an electrical plug. When I explain to you and teach you, you teach it, look at did you teach them? Don't touch it. Stay away. How many of y'all did that? Or you, you said, stay away, don't touch it. Pot hand, leave it alone. They get an aid, you let them go and they can plug something up. What changed? Once you learn the responsibility of what you're dealing with and the danger and detriment, that's why now we can come eat of the tree. We had to understand and learn. Right. In the gun, we were told not to, not to eat it. What else we were told? Don't touch it. We were told not to eat it, and what else? Don't touch it. We were told not to eat it, not to what? Touch it. Yahushua came and told us that in the 15th chapter that he was, the, uh, he was divine. Yes, sir. He was the true vine, and his Abba was the husband. Yes, sir. Talked about every branch in him. The name, he's name referred to himself as an ox, mm -hmm. as a tree. Then after he got up, after a moot, and after he done see. opened their understanding that they might understand the kitchen of being, yes, sir. and started explaining, and get what he told them. Hand to me and see. Why? What happened? What happened? That's right. First of all, I need to give you understanding. First, I need to go back over the risk so you understand the value of what you're doing. You understand how to handle it. What's your handle? Handle me and say, I'm a kicking it behind. I understand it? No. That's death to me. See, people get, get stupid. It's confusion. You can't do something, then you can do something. I was confused because you're an idiot. Right. Just admit you're an idiot. You're not looking at from a point of view of trying to understand right. You're just trying to find a reason to try to try to say it ain't right so you don't have to obey nothing. Our goal ain't trying to get out of obeying nothing. We're trying to obey. We just don't, we're looking at how many pieces they given us to try to put a damper on our understanding. Because we've been clogged with so much other information pushed down and pressed down on us to where when it comes down to understanding him, we got to look at all these other ritual rules that they gave us too. So we start dissecting and look at what's actually valuable, what's actually tangible, or what's actually useful for us versus what people just told us. Oh, boy. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Because we've been damaged so bad. That's the biggest problem, the damage. It don't matter what I tell y'all, I can sit on your face. The damage is still down. The damage is down. And the damage ain't seeming to move until we get an understanding. And, we, and we're trying to learn the value. Of, because the biggest thing I think that's scary about is death. You can lie to yourself. Nigga, I ain't scared to die. I know. If you won, you wouldn't have had a conversation. Right. That's right. Yahushua yeah, was scared to die. Mm -hmm. You think I believe he came from China? No, he going back. That, that, and you scared. I ain't scared. 
Oh, <laughs> nigga, I ain't scared of nothing. Yeah, how much I say that, man? You came from Shamin. You know you're going back. We are trying to configure a way to go. I ain't scared either. You're lying to yourself. You should be very afraid of the unknown. Why you think you can't give us understanding? So I can kind of consolate you from your fears. Your fears and your phobias are what's going to hurt you. So he tried to come through and let you know, I set a passageway over you. That's the comfort he came to give. I never died before. When he told him in his 27th chapter book of uh, but Mark Bar, when he told him to set a man over the congregation, over the dog, he said, set one over him. Mm -hmm. That's why he put him in, put somebody over him. It wasn't just from the fact of them literally from position. He went well, position again because he set them higher. So he was over them. Y'all got it. In rulership and in fact in just natural position, he set him over the people. That's why he put him on the hall. Set him over so he can show them how. And guess what the people, they were watching him. They watched how that man came to their point. They watched him come in. And they watched this man go out. And they watched him come back in again. So you know what? So he could lead them out and they knew he could bring us back in. He went to where we all got to go. Carpenter had to go in and look and examine for themselves to see. He gone. He's gone. He left. We watched him move and now he's gone. And now he done came back again. Now I got confidence he can take me out and he can bring me back in. I got confidence that he can go out and he can bring me back in. Y'all know how important your tour is when you're dealing with this stuff and this information? It's really important when you're looking at it. So it gives you an understanding. We watched him go out and come back in. We knew he had the ability to be able to do this. Hello? Oh, boy, boy, boy. We got a job. Think about when they saw Yahusha were coming now, and they were all ready to forsake everything they had to come now, especially our king. Especially our king. Because you know what? They watched him too come in because he wasn't the oldest. You know they watched him come in, and they put him in the grave. They watched him go out. And they seen him come back again. They had confidence that he would be able to sustain them. See, unlike y'all, you think he just, they just jump up and they go here. We got a famine going over the whole world. People dying. These folks leaving him. What, what's going to make us just trust in you unless we see something? Hello? We watch things he told us in conversation come to pass. But how did he actually get to the position that what he told him? He said, I seen 12 stalks, and they were all standing sheaves. They were bounded together. He said, and all of them fell down to the ground, and they started to shakar to one of mine, while mine stood up. So he was, man, he was going, they knew automatically that he's saying that he's going to be over us. That all of us are going to adore him. We're going to fall down. Why would they, now you think about this. Shakar don't mean just the worship, it means to adore. Why would they adore him? He saved them. He saved them. Listen, <laughs> they all made an agreement that, listen, let's do this. Because I'm telling y'all about me, I don't like about it. How many of y'all like from accusing you of something you ain't done? How many of y'all don't like folks accuse you of something you ain't done? That, I'm talking about piss you off. That's like the ultimate. Don't tell me something I ain't done. As a matter of fact, I tell you what. If I did it, I'd serve you from now on. You, listen, you kill me, I'd die if I did it. I put my life on it. I ain't take it. And when they open that bag, they're over the cup. They're over the cup. This a mess. On top of that, I gave my life and my kid. Y'all know Yehuda put his kid life off a surety. That's called collapse. Y'all do know that your code was not letting Benjamin go. He said, listen, my wife, she bare me two sons. The one was killed by some rosha beast, some, some wild, some wicked animal. He said, well, it was a wicked animal that killed my boy. Now I got one left. If something happened to this one, he said, this thing will kill me. He said, it'll kill me. Because she left me this one. This is the only one I got left. Yehuda told him, so I'll put myself up my kid for surety. At collateral, I'm going to bring him back. I'm going to bring him back. That's why he did it. See, we the only people who do stuff, just take my word for it. Not like they take your word for it. I got to get some collateral. Y'all do know he had to put up collateral. 
When he sat there and they looked at that, brought that cup was in that boy's bag. And I put myself up on this and ran my mouth and put myself out here. This is a flat mess. It's a mess. This man sat here and made up for it. That's what redeemed. He made up for a bad aspect. He said, you know what? We all be your Aberdeen. All of us will sit here and do it. He said, no, that's not right. He said, Allahim, no, that be Rosha. See, that's how we know we came back now. He was going to clear us up for the bit, for the, for the Qatar of the Abba. Because when Benjamin had in the bag, he told him, you go, you know, when Yusuf told him all of them were going to be his Abedin, he, no, Yusuf said, no. He said, I will not do no Rosha like that against Allahim. He said, the one that had the cup, that's who's going to be my Abedin. He looked, he clear. They looked at, well, we together. Police pull you over, they find drugs in the car. Who go to jail? Person driving. All y'all was in the car. They looked at everybody, association. But he looked at, nope, the one that got the cup. That's who will be my Aberdeen. Y'all got it? So the reason why they adore him so much, because he made up for that bad aspect. Is it fair that every one of them should have been made to serve? When you hadn't touched the cup, you ain't seen the cup, you don't know nothing about no cup, this the first time you hear about a damn cup. And you finna sit here and you finna be gone for the rest of your life. It ain't fair. That's what redemption do. He redeemed them. See, that's how we saw Yahushua. If you're only paying for the kataim of your parents, were you there? When your, how many of y'all here got mothers and fathers, got parents? So you, you should be responsible for everything they did when they were 12 and 15 and 19 and 23 at 30. Everything they did in their 40s, you should have to pay for it. Then guess what you need? You need redeeming. That's what you need, redeeming. Because he looked at, really, you shouldn't have to pay for that. You shouldn't have to pay for it. It had nothing to do with you. See, but the only people who would appreciate that is somebody that would look at a law that say, I don't see how you're getting out of it. This is how it's written. If you're born of a person and you have to be born of two people, that means you get both of their katar. And you're suffering because of two different individual katar. Is this fair when you weren't there? How many of y'all were living and you were up while your parent was eight? While your parent was 11? While they were 14? While they were 16, while they were 20. Some of us weren't born until later. Whenever time was. So that thing they did before you came in existence. Why should you pay for it? I tell you why. Because it's written. So Yahushua coming on the scene, I'm going to make up for that. Because this is a bad idea that you're paying for. I don't want to say bad. I don't want to use it, so I'm going to say the book won't take it. But this is a bad aspect. So you need to be redeemed. When they went into Mizraim, the people that proceeded out after them, and people had gone on so long that Yosef had been gone, and the people who were ruling that point, I don't know no damn Yosef. Who y'all talking about? And then you looking at, are you serious? Are you serious? We got to stay here for something, a decision they made? Are you serious? That's why I've been here? Because of something they did? That's why he came and tried to tell you, I'm Yahuwah. What that mean? I redeem you. I'm your redeemer. I'm going to get you out of that situation. You shouldn't have to be here because of the effects of someone else. I'm going to redeem you from that. Everybody don't get that opportunity. The Torah is there. It's clear, plainly written. But the fact that he's a redeemer, I can justify my coming and removing you from it. But you got to be taught of me. When Yahushua told you, come unto me, all that burden and, and I'll give you. If you haven't, Dave, you got 700,000 pounds on your back. You want to get relief from that. When you want it off your back. Okay, I'll do that. But you got to come unto me. And I'm going to give you rest. That's good. Now I'm going to take that off. And then you're going to be able to rest. And take my yoke upon you. Now what you got to do? So when that yoke going to come off his back? Why he thinks as soon as I say he want to come, come under me, he just start running and take it off. It's going to come right back until you get taught of me. Because you don't realize how you got it on you. 
That's the problem we got. See, some of the teachers, they teach about redeeming and saving. Don't make sense. I didn't understand why I'm being saved. How did I even get in that predicament? Even we talked about it several times in the ninth chapter of the book of your code and the ninth chapter of the book of uh, your Ukanon. They called John. They wanted to know when they found a man blind. What did they want to know? Why were they concerned about who sinned? Because they started to measure things. Something happened because of who? Is this your stuff? Is this the stuff of your parents? We don't even worry about it. You know who we say it is? Them shots. That COVID vaccine. Stop being stupid, Cam. Probably got two of them boosters. No. This is either your stuff or your parents' stuff. Or that situation where he told us, no, this only happened so I could come in and I can make up for a bad aspect so people can see I could do that. How about you were blind and it had nothing to do with your parents? Had nothing to do with you. So how you feel about that? Stay blind? I don't think I should stay blind. I think I should be able to see. If I hadn't done that and my parents hadn't done that, I should stay blind. Is that fair that I should be blind? Then someone needs to come in and redeem me. Let's go with redeem. Because he constantly kept telling me you're redeemed. We never paid attention. Why he kept saying I'm your redeemer? I'm the person that's going to make up for the bad aspect of what happened. I came to redeem you. So, there's something got to be redeemable. How many of y'all had a uh, coupon before? It said redeemable at more stores. Some folks go take it and it's out of date. They still let you use it? You missed it. This is a wonderful opportunity to get it, too. Look at your coupon date. Look at your coupon date. It about to expire. Hello? For the other GUI, don't y'all know he told you that? He turned it back to us. Don't y'all know that coupon finna expire? The last people he got to gather in is us. He only, listen, the only way he rejected us was to get him an opportunity. Their coupon is fine. Y'all saying that, tell them, gentil gen them Gentiles and Yashara all their time up. Don't y'all know he told y'all that? Alahim had not cast away his arm that he foreknew. He's got to turn back to us. Our fall became their riches. Our move, our death. How you think other people came into place though? Let me tell y'all something right quick. Just to give you an idea slightly what I'm talking. Y'all remember um, Solomon? They, they called Solomon. One of his greatest cases. Greatest case he had. There were two ladies that slept in the same house. And both of them had babies and they were nursing them. Two men. One lady in the middle of the night rolled over on hers. And hers died. And you know what happened at that point? They left to fight for one. She wanted to claim the living one. Hers were dead. Y'all see that? And that's what we're doing. That's how these other people getting in. Yahuwah looked at some of us. We dead to him. And all he wanted to do was replace that void of where I had a son. I used to have a son. I had a little boy. He was precious to me. And I lost that little boy. And I need something to fill that void in my life again. So he's looking for somebody else that could come and take the state of that. Hello? That son he had he loved, that looked up to him, that did everything he wanted, it left a void there. And he's looking for, some, he's looking for another son to come and replace that void. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to replace that void that's there. Y'all got it? So that's why we had to be taught of him. We had to learn what does he like. Y'all got it? Just like your code. When he went in to imitate his son, Asu, his mother told him what his father liked. Hello? The man has a desire for something. You know what Yahushua told, Yahuwah told his soul desire? The first ripe. That's right. Ukar Shabur. He's our desire, the first ripe fruit. That's why we come in, we keep the muhar. We support the brain in. The first of it that's right, the first one to get right, bring it in. Y'all got it. We were supposed to bring it. He said, that's what I desire. As soon as you get home, you real home, you get home, what you desire? Go ahead and cook some other food and cook mine later. What you desire? As soon as, soon as you get it done, I want it. Get it to me first. That's what I want. I can't wait no longer. 
I ain't waiting on nothing else. I need as soon as it cook. That's what I need now. Well, I got some other stuff I'm gonna cook for them. No, I need the first right, and that's what we learned when same thing we learned with Ali. Y'all remember that? When he came along, he saw the lady, the widow and her son, they were about to move. And he told her, go ahead and cook them some and just make sure y'all save enough for me. Cook who? They were getting ready to move. He said, I desire the first one that's done. Symbolism, isn't it? The first one that get cooked. He said, that go to me. They're like the tide when we take it up. I don't know what crap I'm talking about. He, he about to get ready to get kicked out of there. He got some. Oh, y'all see? Y'all ain't no fool. That conversation give him away. Conversation give him away all the time. Already he said that, the next man get ready to tell him he's going to make sure they don't get the money he made. See, you know what? Jake, Dollar, Long, a lot of them guys they could figure. Eventually, they didn't think they'd actually get old the way they're at now, and they're going to get ousted. See, younger people coming up, they done took these guys' doctrine, honed it, got better with it, and they finna replace these guys. The churches are younger. Not these folks older now. All the folks you raped right there now, a lot of people in their fifties, then I'm folks in their seventies and eighty retired. They ain't getting that kind of money in no more. And they're taking these younger people coming in and younger people looking at younger preachers and your behind finna be out the door. You know what? I was wrong for taking time. I was wrong for making y'all buy me a jet. So now when a new nigga get in, he tell them, yeah, I need to get a car. Hold on for a minute. That's sin. Why are we gonna buy you a car? There ain't no fool. People making more money. People bring in more money. He getting older, finna hit out the door, and they look at these young niggas finna make way more money than I even thought about. So what are they gonna do? Yeah, ties is wrong. So wrong, once you sell that plane, get them folk back their money. How they make the book say you part of recompense them back fourfold. And you got fifty four million, what that two hundred and what, sixteen thousand dollars or something? Ain't that right? So you need to come on and pay the full $216 million. If you honest on being right, because the book says you're supposed to recompense. You ain't supposed to get them back exact. You're supposed to come back fourfold. See, that's why these folks, they're not honest when they tell y'all this stuff. I know, oh, I'm repenting. Oh, well, pay back fourfold. That's the Torah. See, you got number crook. So you tell him that he's going to go back. Yeah, I'm just lying. Ties right. <laughs> this ain't your first time lying, is it? Huh? I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all look so half dead. Somebody, it, it, it is. I wouldn't tell y'all no lie. Folks need to know about y'all. Y'all terrible. That's the whole group now, but it ain't every one of y'all in it. Been just terrible. Because you don't even consider. How long y'all think that man gonna, how long this man going to put up with y'all? Y'all get understanding that people before y'all never got. Y'all get to sit down and look at things and be able to really sit down and consider, configure. This makes sense to me. And realize stuff you were told, stuff we were told, that stuff ain't made no sense. We just agreed for the sake of people were looking at us. We ain't want to look dumb, and the whole time that made us dumber. Yeah. No, we ain't understood nothing. Hey, the understanding, we, are y'all clear or not, true or not, are you getting much more understanding than you had before? Yes. You're able to really read and understand this makes sense. The stuff they told me didn't make no sense. Let me tell you, what sense it made they went and stuck up some thorns on a man's head? other than it ought to validated that he had to die. This was going to replace the one bun. That man told the name was, what's the name of Barabbas? What do we know what Barabbas meant? We didn't have no idea what Barabbas, then he was a thief and he was a murderer. Ain't that right? Now they told overthrowing government. And the reason the folk let it go, we let it, why? Because the people wanted to murder, that's why they want to know. It was because Yasakar got let go. Your whole let them know, I'm going to give my son. My son is going to be the ram. That's why I was in point for us from Abraham to understand I used the same thing or the same methodology when it came down in Mizraim. That you were picking one for me. This was going to be something I designated. That was going to come in and be sufficient enough to clear everybody. All of them were guilty. Why y'all think earlier, just amazing when I start off, I said, where are we starting off at from? Shio. Building, when we start reading, we use a foundation. Let's look at where we were at. Why would he not come down? Why would he come down here if we weren't in Shio? If there was no chance, no probability that we were going to burn, why would he come? Wouldn't be no need. He only became, he said, I see y'all. Y'all burning. You have no idea. You guys are burning. He came to make up for that. I came to teach you how to get out. That's why I said, if you know the truth, they're not going to make you free. 
That's what's going to free you. How you going to free somebody that ain't captive? How you going to free somebody that ain't bound? You had to be bound. You had to be captive. That's why this knowledge was going to be important to us. Realize how did man really set this up for us to realize, first of all, where you at? Get out of your mind. You in between something. You're not in between nothing. You're in one place. Don't let these people be telling you no lie. And they'll tell you that because people want to feel better about themselves. You don't need to feel better about yourself until you know where you're at. And you feel better about yourself when you gain yourself from that situation. A lot of people take pride when they get out of stuff. I used to be a crackhead. People tell you that. People say, I used to be a prostitute. I used to be whatever. They take pride in the fact I'm away. I've escaped that life. So now I can testify that life. That was an old life I used to have. That's what we have to be at. A lot of stuff we're going to try to testify to, you still there. You hadn't left it. You hadn't left it. And I don't want no false illusion to be given to none of us. I want us to know the might. If the might going to make us free, it's going to be important for us to know it. And in my ears, we're working from Sheol. We're working from the ground up. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. Let's make sure everybody on the same platform. Make sure we understand what we're doing. That's two.